Good day all. On behalf of the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, I would like to thank you for this opportunity to participate in this share fair. Climate action is a global priority and geospatial tools and applications play a critical role in targeting, monitoring and evaluating climate change, mitigation and adaptation investments. As highlighted by the COP26 goals, we can only rise to the challenge of the climate crisis by working together. FAO is proud to be present and concretely contribute to meeting these challenges. FAO's mandate includes supporting and assisting countries in their transformation towards more efficient and inclusive, resilient, sustainable agri-food systems for better production, better nutrition, better environments and a better life. Our big fours, leaving no one behind. The FAO Hand in Hand initiative aims to accelerate agricultural transformation and sustainable rural development, to eradicate poverty and to end hunger and all forms of malnutrition. A territorial approach has been adopted. identifying the biggest opportunities and designing interventions and investments that will raise the incomes and reduce the inequalities and the vulnerabilities of rural populations who constitute the vast majority of the world's poor. Experience in the agricultural development and the latest advances in agroinformatics, we have developed the hand-in-hand -hand geospatial platform Now here I'm preparing an example of how the platform has been used to identify mobile storage locations. The platform federates and integrates data on crops, livestock, water, climate, fisheries, forestry, trade, socioeconomic factors, and it's sourced from across the organisation and our partners. The platform is accessible through a web browser and there's no need to install any additional software. It leverages open source software and cloud technologies. So let's take a look at the platform uh, in a bit more detail. So I will remove these layers and uh, let's have a look in the catalogue. Um, let's start with uh, crops and vegetation and take a look at the agricultural stress index. So we'll start out with the uh, with this decadal data. So it's near real time. That's uh, every ten days, and the resolution is approximately uh, one kilometer. So I'm going to add that to the map. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit so you you have a, have a better view of that. Uh, and as I said, uh, this is uh, supports time. So uh, we're able to either pick a particular time. So let's say we could jump right the way to today. And let's see where's the latest one. So the latest one we have is uh, for the end of October. And we can also step through time. So I can go back to the previous time period, or I can uh, jump to a specific time on the timeline by, by clicking here. The other thing we can do is to, uh, to click on the map itself and uh, we'll get, uh, we'll get uh, uh, some information about that specific area that I just clicked on. Okay, so staying with time, uh, we can also play it as a video. So if I uh, play here, uh, the map will start to update. So I hope you can see that changing as the time uh, updates. So uh, these are the days going by. Let's, uh, let me uh, change to a different part of the world for you. So you'll see that the map here is updating so we can see uh, an idea of the evolution uh, in this particular data set. So I'll pause that there and let's uh, continue with our tool. Let's uh, remove the climate stress index and go back to the catalogue and uh, let's choose some climate data. So let's take um, some historical precipitation. Uh, we'll start out with the monthly precipitation from the Climate Hazard Group CHIRPS and we'll put that onto the map. 
Let's make it a little bit more obvious. Okay, and let's uh, let's zoom in a little bit, perhaps. And uh, perhaps we can come down here to uh, Eastern Africa. Uh, so you can see again that we can we can step through time in a similar way as we could with the um, the agricultural stress index. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is to add some uh, long-term historical averages. So this is a long-term monthly historical average. I'm going to split the screen into two. Um, I will put the long-term average on the um, on the right-hand side of the map, and I will put the uh, the current year uh, monthly rainfall on the left-hand side. So here we're looking at uh, this uh, September. So let's do the same over here. We'll change this also to September. And uh, in that way, we can get a very quick, uh, a very quick way of seeing how the current rainfall is in comparison with the the, the long-term average. So let me make the long-term average a little bit bolder. Okay, so you'll see that uh, actually it's been a, a bit wetter here uh, in the region where I'm moving back and forth. Uh, than, than uh, the historical long-term average. Uh, so let's remove the long-term average uh, and let's add, uh, let's add some future uh, uh, information. So I'm going to add the future forecast. So uh, let's uh, not link this with time so they don't move at the same time. And again, put it only on the, um, on the right-hand side. And so we are looking at uh, the November forecast on the right hand side and it's um, scheduled to be, or well, forecast to be uh, quite a bit drier. And on the left hand side, uh, we have October. Uh, so you can see that, uh, that the, 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 the forecast here is for it to be uh, rather drier than, 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 uh, than typical. So this is in fact an anomaly. So what we probably should do is to remove that and to uh, go back to our historical and add a three monthly anomaly instead of, uh, instead of the actual. So this is showing the difference in the expected rainfall. So over here you'll see uh, in, the, in the whole of Africa it's, uh, it's drier than anticipated and it's forecast to also be uh, drier than, than expected. Okay, let's uh, let's remove that and let's go back to the catalog very quickly.